Are there any changes you'd like to see in the UK to help people with cancer, either primary or secondary, stay working if that's what they want? I think it is just back to that um, piece about the default changing. But for me, the biggest practical thing we can do is think about how we work, ways of working. Um, I think too often, um, you know, we've been talking about flexible working as being part-time hours and the domain of part-time working mothers for so long in so many um, different sectors and, and roles. Flexible, creative, agile working is not just that. It's about, you know, we've got this five-generational workforce, we've got multicultural work places etc we need to be thinking really creatively about what we actually mean by the way we work and what yeah. I'm finding quite um sad to see is the amount of rhetoric there is about going back to the city going back to the, and that that's my world obviously everybody's in different yeah. Everybody back in the office because you know we've got to keep the sandwich shops going, and in that's how we've always yeah. done it. But actually, I work far more at home because I'm not distracted, and I'll do a solid three or four hours and get almost double the amount done. I agree totally. And um, I have been far more productive when I'm creative and flexible, and I can make things um, work for me. So I think that for me, it's maybe not a legal change, or maybe it is. I don't know. But for me, it's a mindset shift that we all need to, and it's not just a construct for working that has always suited one demographic. So it didn't work even before we went into COVID no. for like anything else, you know, and um, I think that would be a, a great mindset shift. But I think the biggest message I would leave um, with is um, anybody, employer, colleague, friend, whatever, is what I feel passionate about is this is not about sympathy. This is about empathy and the two are quite different. So when I get sympathy, it's things like, you know, people trying to find a silver lining for me, or well, at least it's not that. Or, the pat on the shoulder, yeah, the look. Yes, all of that. And that doesn't help. When I'm talking about empathy, I'm talking about the person that's willing to climb in the big dark ditch with me and say, do you know what? I don't know what to say to you right now, but you just need to know I'm here for you. And I'm so glad you shared that. And it's a subtle shift, but it requires in somebody a suspension of not going into what, what can I say to be sympathetic here, but just listening, just holding the space and then being empathetic to how that might feel. And that requires a vulnerability which is difficult for the individual um, to hold, but it's not about a pat on the back. It is genuinely just about, thank you for sharing and I'm here with you, whatever you need. Um, and that empathetic piece is whether you're an employer, whether you're a neighbor, wh whatever it might be. Yeah. Um, but I think that's, that's at the heart of it for me. And that's just brilliant advice. I think a lot of us are very bad at listening. We're too busy thinking about what we can say to join in that mutual conversation, but this is something you have no experience of. Yeah. So just sit and listen and be there. That, that's right. We're 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 on a I go fast for everything. And I think, you know, we try to maybe jump some of the hurdles of just listening, just absorbing, just suspending judgment. And I think that's that's what's needed in this and other sort of similar situations. I think remembering a cancer patient isn't just a cancer patient. Don't take their control away. You are an amazing, incredible working woman. Cancer is just a tiny part of your life. And if we can help change that mindset, it might help the lives of so many people in the future. Absolutely is. And it's not something the individual chooses. I would give anything not to be in this situation. But cancer takes so much control, takes all your future choices away. And I yeah. think... Therefore, don't work with somebody in a way that takes even more of their choices away, despite the fact you're doing it with the absolute best of intent, you know, to try to lighten the load for that individual. It just makes the, 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 the cancer patient feel like even more has been taken away from them. And, you know, they've suddenly turned from this competent and, you know, confident person to other people have to make decisions for them. And it's, yeah. it's it doesn't feel good. No. Not at all. We need to empower people. We do.